lot of good news there. I mean, the China stats are definitely good news. I mean, so much uncertainty around that and, um, you know, very positive trend there. I think you're seeing pandemic tailwinds across the board for the business, both in terms of new device sales, um, as well as services. And I think, you know, with the appeal the products have in the marketplace and the demand, I think you can, you know, think there's some uh, sustainability to that too, but obviously huge quarter, you know, breaking a hundred billion for the first time, very big deal. Also want to welcome Peter Rojas to the conversation, partner at Betaworks Ventures, who is with us now. Peter, the, the stock had already had such a strong run up into earnings off up almost 80% or so, I think maybe more than that over the last 12 months and strong this year as well. They came out with a quarter that, that did well. Did they leave anything? I guess no guidance. Is that what, what's being desired, left to be desired here with Apple shares under a little pressure? Yeah, it doesn't appear they're, they're offering guidance. Uh, maybe some guidelines uh, on the call later, but uh, uh, no guidance uh, as far as I could see right now. But P Peter, just wanted to come in on, on the breakdown of these numbers. Uh, China, you know, uh, play devil's advocate here. Clearly outstanding numbers uh, overall. But uh, for, for a long time, we've talked about shifting to services and a higher multiple. But uh, given where they're having all their beats at the moment, uh, iPhone and, and iPad and Mac, et cetera, Products are 96 billion of revenue, services only 16 billion of revenue. Is, is that anything to be disappointed about based on the multiple it might lead to? Well, it's hard to say that it's exactly disappointing because uh, we were looking at this past quarter at a generational uh, change in terms of the upgrade cycle with the iPhone 12 and uh, the addition of 5G. And frankly, a lot of people who had held off on upgrading their phones over the past uh, couple of years looking for uh, you know, a significant, significant upgrade. Look, the iPhone business is still very, very strong for them. And I think that uh, it is going to continue to drive growth going forward. Uh, the question is really, you know, how can Apple continue to use uh, the iPhone and iPad as a launch pad for the services business? You know, they've invested a lot in uh, in content and services uh, in, in tethering these uh, new subscription businesses uh, to, you know, the devices so that when you buy a new iPhone, for example, you get a subscription to uh, for several months to Apple uh, TV, for example. And so, you know, they're taking a very long view at this. And uh, the fact that the iPhone uh, is continuing to perform very strongly, I think, sets that's a good foundation for that. Uh, and so it's hard to be, you know, strongly disappointed from my perspective. I would echo Jessica, that. If you could just well. pull up Facebook. Oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I think, you know, the, the hardware acceleration is great for the services business and vice versa. You know, we've reported at the information that Apple's going to experiment with subscription podcasting, uh, just a lot of experimentation. I think we'll see from them in tying those two together. And I think it will lift both boats. Wanted to, to follow up, Jessica, on something you brought up earlier as it relates to Facebook's quarter, which was also quite strong, but it did cite a number of uncertainties in the outlook. And one of them had to do with Apple. So can you just explain this, this Facebook-Apple feud, which is now materially apparently impacting Facebook's business? Absolutely. You know, Facebook's been really critical of some changes Apple's made to how um, sort of ad targeting or ad accountability um, will work on, on iPhones. You know, Apple really wants to protect consumer privacy, has unveiled a lot of new features to do that. And Facebook is really concerned about how that will affect the efficacy of advertising on Facebook. So this war is spilled into the press. It's getting hot and heated. And you're seeing now Facebook, uh, you know, flick at it um, in the future. You know, how much it will affect the business, who knows? There is a sort of war of words and strategy going on here. But we're certainly interested to see it in Facebook's forward-looking comments. Peter, is there a risk at all for Apple that uh, all of the 5G demand has arrived, all of the pandemic-related uh, iPad and uh, laptop demand has, has already uh, been and gone? Well, I think there is a, a um, small risk in that a lot of people cooped up at home this past year, spending a lot more time on their devices than they have in the past, um, you know, saw that as a great reason or excuse to upgrade uh, and um, and to you know make that investment now rather than doing it in the future. Uh, you know, and I, I think that we will probably not see necessarily a strong uh, of a 
quarter, uh, you know, as we, as we saw this past quarter, uh, even a year from now, um, you know, we tend to see uh, Apple's devices take sort of a cyclical, like every other year is really the, the big upgrade um, for the devices or even every three years. Um, you know, with 5G, actually, I think that, um, you know, most uh, people are not purchasing a device specifically just to get the higher speeds of 5G in part because uh, they either don't see the benefit or they don't live in a place where they're able to get the really, really fast millimeter, millimeter wave uh, you know, 5G service. And so I think as we start to see that infrastructure and coverage roll out across the country, and frankly, starting to see the wireless carriers start to better message and market around 5G, that may be something that drives upgrades, uh, you know, in the future. But I don't think that is something that, uh, you know, caused an inflection in, in uh, the number of people upgrading this past quarter. Hmm. Apple swinging up and down around the flat line right now. Jessica Less and Peter Rojas, we will leave it there. Thank you both. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.